What's up, y'all? Let's get straight into it. Straight men need to step up their game and relationally with women or they are going to be pushed out. We really are seeing... Pushed out to where? Dudes can just go get a passport and go to Asia. Shots fired! Where are we going to get it pushed out to? This play out in real time through the 4B movement. If you're not aware of this movement, it's a radical feminist movement that originated in South Korea, but... I love how... <laughs> They're trying to seem so sane about this, but they're like, it's a radical feminist movement. <laughs> Anything that's ra has radical in front of it usually isn't good. Or would it be behind? I don't know. I'm stupid. Stupid. Has gone global in recent months, and the focus of it is decentering men, but in a very hardcore way. Straight women. What, and what, is, what does the whole decentering mean? What does that even mean? What, like, I, let's Google that. What? What? does it mean to decenter? Decentering men is a lifestyle that involves unlearning patriar patriarchal norms and challenging gender roles. Okay. It's about r recognizing your own value, embracing your true self rather than tying your words to the relationships with men. It's about identifying what brings you happiness and what you want from your life. Don't women get a lot of value out of like family and children? Okay. It's about navigating relationships beyond traditional gender roles and questioning the importance of romantic love. Decentering men can be a long-term practice that involves a community to guide you. Some say that the goal is not to cut people out of your lives, but to transform the world. Okay. Let's let's get back to the decentral decentralization here. Eight women specifically are committing to not only never marrying men, but never being in relationships with men or dating men, and more significantly, to never having sex with men. And we are at a- These women sound like nuns. <laughs> <laughs> no sex, no relationships, no contact. It's like, just go be a nun. Very interesting point in history now where sex toy technology is so good that women do not need men in a sex context and there's obviously been a trend for a while now of women committing to platonic life partnerships which is where they move in together with a best friend of the same gender sister wives and have a completely non but committed lifelong relationship because they are finding more meaning in that relationship and more connection and support and validation than what they are getting through their this reminds me of, of like my 600 pound life with Dr. Now when it's like, who is your enabler? Basically you just get two people that live in the same house that are both each other's enablers that don't hold each other accountable and don't make each other better. To me, when I found Cass, she was what I needed. Now she was also what I wanted, but I also needed her. She was highly organized. She had a lot of the qualities that I was lacking. Um, she was very womanly. I could see her potentially being the mother of my children. You know, there was a lot of things that she had that I was like, man, I want those qualities. And I feel like a lot of people nowadays are so egotistical that they don't want to step outside of their comfort zone and get somebody that's not exactly like them. They want a splitting image of them. They want a mirror of all their interests, all their likes, all their hobbies. They just want somebody that just echoes all the same things that they're interested in. And to me, that's kind of boring. If we're all made the same, where's the variety? The variety in having a partner is somebody having having someone that's not exactly like you so you can learn some other things. God forbid somebody's not exactly like you because maybe then you'll actually learn something new. You don't learn something new from hanging out with people that are just like you all the time. Relationships with men. I think for so long men have seen it as some kind of threat that they can make. Like, well, you need men. Like, what will you do without us? But women are literally at a point where they are so fed up that they are saying, we don't care. We are just really sick of men's shit. This is the consequence of toxic masculinity. This is the consequence. I love it, toxic masculinity. <laughs> I love it. Of this whole alpha male movement that was led by the likes of Andrew Tate and Jordan Peterson telling men that women need to go back to traditional gender roles. Women need to go back to the kitchen. Women can't have only... Pages. They can't have Instagram accounts. I, I, I don't think they should have OnlyFans pages. Instagram accounts, and do what you want with social media. They can't wear certain items of clothing. Women are just like, f*** that. We're just going to do us. And if the human race dies out because we're no longer procreating, then so be it. I'm sorry, but if it got to that point, if it got to that point, something would probably be done. There would probably be some law that says you have to procreate or something. I don't think it would ever get to that point. 
I know the dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt in an accident. Have you ever found yourself involved in a personal injury case? As an image consultant, I meet a lot of clients who are actually recovering from all sorts of injuries, from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was actually surprised to see at how many people lose their personal injury cases, which is why I want to talk about Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they've won thousands of big cases. And if you do end up working with them, they're going to fight for the money that you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan solidified verdicts in Florida for $12 million and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is, it's all free unless you win your case. Now, if you've also been the victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi, found in the description below, where you can start your free claim today. Something, something will happen. Why in a moment of distress people don't set realistic goals for themselves? Y'all are 4B movementing me to death and y'all do not know the first thing about being anybody's 4 or B. 4B movements, let me reiterate for y'all, means y'all not going to be with no man, y'all not going to be dealing with no man, y'all not going to be having intercourse with no man, y'all not going to be dating no man, it's just going to be you, yourself, and you and your homegirls, okay? And some women can do this because this is something that have been practicing for a long amount of time, but a lot of us cannot, and I'm including myself and a lot of us. See how sane she looks? Like, I, I know I keep saying this, but like, when we hear these based women, they look so, and I don't want this to sound bad, normal. They look like, she. this woman seems very pleasant to be around. Like, she seems like she should be very easy to hang out with. Like, what's wrong with being pleasant? Instead of feeling like because now all of these restrictions may be placed on women that you just have to decenter men, right? You have to just say F all men. How about you date with a purpose? Hear me out. Mm. How about you only involve yourself with men who you can see yourself having a child with? How about you abstain until you meet someone who is worthy of your goods? How about refocusing on that? How about not cutting off something that you don't want to cut off, but rather putting yourself first, ensuring that you are your first priority? Because see, baby, when you are your first priority and you are dating and you meet someone, that person will also make you their first priority. And you see, if you like that person in return, you're going to make that person your first priority, right? And so now your man is making you his first priority. You're making that man your first priority. So everyone is being prioritized. And see, this is when I talk about having duty in a relationship. And I don't mean this duty. I mean duty. D-U-T-Y. We've lost our way when it comes to serving another person in a relationship. Like, what's wrong with being a little bit selfless and having duty to another person? That's what it's all about. A give and a go. A give and a take. We're a team, right? Together, everyone achieves more. And, and, and I know that's a, it's a cheesy acronym there, but I think we're better together and together we're better. We, we made it to this point in the world where there had to be so much violence for us to be as comfortable as we are right now and to be so peaceful that we should be thankful that we can even complain about these things. But privilege is blind to those who have it. People think we have it so bad here. There's people in third world countries that are just dying trying to get here. And we're talking about it so bad. It's like, come on, stop. And everyone is happy. But that starts with putting yourself first. That starts with not letting just any old n run through you that starts with ensuring that you are using your discernment that you are vetting people properly right that starts with only dealing with people that's on your level that starts with not being delusional about who's not on your level meaning sometimes he may be out of your league sis let's Preach. start there okay let's set realistic goals and then and then you got people talking about oh you need to break up with your man and you need to get divorced who because I'm not leaving my man for nothing, baby. And some of y'all got some good men and willing to say, mm, maybe I should be idiot. Set better goals, be more realistic, and you'll have less to worry about. Stay safe. Love it. Love seeing based women come in here and preach some sense. So the protest, so the protest. Let me pause this real quick. Loki, do you want some beef turkey, dude? Oh my lord, you got up so quick. Free. Go to your place. Did y'all see how fast he got up? <laughs> he got up so quick, bro. <sighs> so the protests, Donald Trump's win, 
women are going to stop having sex with just anybody until a man respects them. Oh my gosh, what are y'all going to do next? Start reading the Bible? So the protest... Right? Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> They're like, ah, oh, uh, I'm going to start reading the Bible. I'm going to start being more conservative. We're really going to stick it to the men. <laughs> I know some of you think that you've ate with the go make your husband a sandwich comment. Go ask your husband for permission comments. I know y'all think y'all ate with those, but why would in the world would that be an insult to me? You want me to go make the man who's provided me a beautiful life, gave me a beautiful child, works 60 hours a week, so I don't want for anything, caters to my every need, treats me like a princess, respects me, never raises his voice at me, doesn't step out on me, shows up for us without excuse. Why would it be a problem I go make him a sandwich? Breach it. Yes, I will make him whatever he wants. I don't have to work. I don't have to worry about bills. I don't have to worry about my son being without a father. I don't have to worry about finding out about affair after affair. Honey, I've, I've literally married the opposite of what I came from. See, this is the power in opposites, bro. Even with batteries. I know this is probably the dumbest analogy you can make. Stupid. But opposites attract, even with batteries. Why would you think that you need to get somebody that's just exactly like you? To me, it just screams narcissism if you just want a carbon copy of yourself. Some of the comments are, been a stay-at-home wife for 24 years, will make him whatever he wants unconditionally. It's definitely not a clapback. I love taking care of my hubby because he takes care of me. Say it louder for the people in the back. I will do anything for my husband. We know what they don't. Joy and friendship. It's awesome with the right one. I told my husband to make me a grilled cheese yesterday. Pretty much demanded it. He will literally do anything for me. Girl, yes, I love catering and spoiling my man when he does for me and our family without fault. And you look at all these women in these comments. Like, a lot of these women, they look so normal. They don't look crazy. They're not blue-haired. They don't have the bull nose ring. It, like another another example here, she's got the little hoop earrings, but this chick looks like a pleasure to be around. Why would I not make that man a sandwich? And on top of that, maybe some of y'all's relationships would actually start working if you had mutual respect. Mm. It is not a one-way street all of the time, okay? It is common when you actually respect your partner, you want to run ideas by them. You want their input on things. They're your best friend, or at least they're supposed to be. Bro, I, I run everything by Cass, and she does the same for me. It doesn't matter if it has anything to do with YouTube, buying new gear. Like, I bought a new camera the other day, and I was, like, talking to her about it. Like, we literally are so transparent with each other, but it makes our it makes our relationship so much stronger when you just communicate, like, overly communicate. Okay, I'm not one of those wives that goes and hangs out with her friends and has a million complaints about her spouse. I have a very good man. Okay, my ex, you want to know how we broke up? We broke up the night that he, me through a back door, broke all the glass in my back, shoved a wood wooden panel through my back as he was flinging my year old across the room because he tried to get a grown man off of me. That was my last relationship. I went from that, and then my childhood, don't even get me started. If anyone has a reason not to be married, it's me. I've, I can, I, trust me, I know well, how there's a lot of women have, that have been through a lot of things that they don't even talk about. They don't talk about it all. And I feel like women at a young age are victimized way more than men are, so I feel bad for a lot of those women. So kudos to her. Kudos to her. I love seeing women happy. I love seeing women in relationships. There's nothing better, man. Abandon the 4B movement. I repeat, abandon the 4B movement. There have been a lot of videos going around about the 4B movement, and I decided to do a little bit of research. More specifically, I decided to look for Korean creators on here who are talking about the 4B movement. Don't do it. <laughs> abandon that shit. The 4B movement will not be conducive to what we have going on here in America. Abandon it. Let's just continue to decenter men. Let's use decentering men as our centralized idea. We don't need to call it anything, actually, except decentering. Didn't you just call it decentering men? Okay. Men. The entire point of decentering men is removing men from positions of priority. You don't really need to call it anything except for what it is. Decentering men. Decentering men is also good for women who don't necessarily want to remove themselves from the dating pool. There are a lot of women who still want to date men, but they want to remove those men from the center of their priorities. And that's valid. 
Sure. But also, no offense, with so many white women joining the 4B movement, it feels a little performative. Because we know, we know how y'all do. We're in the position we are now because you guys will not keep up your end of the bargain. No offense to white women at all, but if so many of y'all are joining a movement, I ain't. Abandon the 4B movement, I repeat. Lord have mercy, she really cooked on that one, didn't she? Goodness gracious, I saw this clip, I have to share this. This granny right here is so based. Oh gosh, um, what do women want in men? Oh gosh, um, women, well, instinctually, we are always um, sorting for strength because then we're safe. Is he strong enough to protect me? Including, is he strong enough to protect me from my worst enemy? Which is my- Notice, notice how gentle she is. Notice how feminine, soft-spoken she is. This is the biggest difference in our generations. From the chick before this video to this lady right here, this woman exudes femininity. So many women right now are so masculine, and they wonder why men don't want to put up with it. Why would I want to go out there and conquer the world and have to come home and argue with you? Why would I want to do that? And what frame of mind does that make sense as a man to go out there and deal with all the other men we're competing with in the modern job market to come home and have to tame you or deal with you? Let's keep watching this clip, but just notice how this woman is so... She's so fragile. She's so quaint. She's so elegant. Just notice. Is myself. <laughs> it's the voice in my head. We call it the perfect person in the Queen's Code, the ideal woman in our online workshops, the critic, the constant critic that's saying, this is what's wrong with me, and this is what's wrong with me, and this is what's wrong with me, and then coming up with a strategy to fix the thing that's wrong with me. And they just want us to be ourselves. Like, and I don't know about you guys, but growing up, there was a, like I had a buddy, and his mom was a stay-at-home mom. Um, his dad made a lot of money, so she was allowed to do that. My mom was a single mom, um, so it was different. Like when I was at home, my mom played more of the masculine role because she was raising me. I was a boy; she had multiple jobs, like she worked all the time. But then I'd go over to his house, and I would just notice how like uplifting and elegant and empathetic the mom was. Like the dad was very stern, but then when the boys would do something. You know, the dad would scold and then the mom would come in and be like, it's okay, honey, it's okay. But she was always just so gentle. And I was like, man, I wish I got more of that at home. You know, I love my mom to pieces. She's great. She did a good job with me. But at the same time, she didn't really get to bask in her femininity because she didn't have a good man in her life for a long time. I was like 14 or 15 before she met her now husband. And, you know... At the time, it's always weird having a stepdad. And like, let, chat, let me know if any of you guys had a stepdad. Loki is plotting on me so hard. But having a stepdad, it's like you don't really let him father you because he's not your dad. So it's weird. But I just remember seeing that as a kid and being like, man, I want that someday. I want to bring home all the bacon. And I want my wife to be in the kitchen with the apron on, singing her favorite music, you know, taste testing things and just kind of like living free. Like, and that's what I finally got, thank goodness. But um, I think that's so underrated. But let me know, were you guys raised by a two parent household, a single parent household? Were you raised by a mom, a dad? Let me know in the comments. I saw this chick and was like, God, we need more. And this chick is like a Gen Z. Um, but I, I, this girl's great. My boyfriend's gonna be home in 20 minutes, so I'm making another man dinner. The most crucial part of any man dinner is the meat. She Take knows. Notes. I'm making pasta for my boyfriend and his friends so that my boyfriend can flex. I got a lot of comments in my last video saying that I shouldn't be cooking for my boyfriend until he's my husband. But that's why none of y'all ladies got a man. Fired. Cause you ain't willing to do the work. These are the prerequisites to get a freaking husband, you igmos. Stupid. And just so you know what an Igmo is, is an ignorant moron. <laughs> so this is just a little advice for the girls. If the thought of cooking for your significant other wouldn't cross your mind unless you had a ring, you probably don't like him that much. Facts. I love to cook. And I love my boyfriend. And he loves to eat. You would never catch me doing that without a ring. Wife shit on a girlfriend's salary. How do you become a wife if you don't do wifey shit? Being Facts. a girlfriend is like a trial run. But even that's like a sad God, way to- She gets it though. Like you wanna be a wife, you have to pre be the prerequisites to be 
a girlfriend first, then a fiance, then a wife. It's like showing up to a job interview to be a lawyer and being like, all right, have you taken the bar? Have you went to college? And they're like, so I haven't taken the bar. I never went to college. Um, I've never done any mock trials. I've never done anything, but I want to be a top lawyer that's paid here. It's like, bro, get out. <laughs> it's like, you have to have the prerequisites. Protect women like this at all costs way to think about it. I don't cook for my man because I want him to wife me. I cook for him because I like doing it. I find it fun. He feels appreciated. He's the best boyfriend ever. Why wouldn't I do this? And yes, I cook for his friends because if you know men, that is such a flex. Also, they're at my house. Why wouldn't I cook for them? Anyway, man bowl, man bowl, girl bowl. Bro, I love it. I love it. We need more women like this, bro. More women like this make the make the world a beautiful place because does she seem like she's oppressed? Does she she seem like she's hating herself? Like she looked like a very quaint um, and normal girl. Bro, I saw this video. This this chick. What's what's crazy is this chick is bald headed. She would be like the atypical four B feminist. But like, listen to what she says about what the four Bs stand for. <laughs> Brainwashed, bitchy, bitter, and now bald. I think I finally understand the four B movement. <laughs> Brainwashed. She's cooking, bitch. bro. Brainwashed, bitter. <laughs> I couldn't help. I couldn't help but laugh. I couldn't help but laugh. Um, looks can be deceiving, though, bro. Some of the comments: these these idiots are making such a mockery of the original 4B movement and inadvertently making women with alopecia and cancer patients appear to be part of the part of it. Pisses me off. That is one big thing that's highly disrespectful of the 4B movement right now is they're shaving their heads because they think it's going to be unappealing to men where there's women out there that can't grow hair. That is so disrespectful to the women that do have alopecia, alopecia or have had cancer and have to shave their heads. So you're telling me those women are just ugly and undesirable? Like, bro, this movement is imploding in on itself. It's the most self-destructive movement. It's going to take women back to their factory settings, make them more conservative, hopefully get them into loving relationships and not give up their body as easy. I think it'll make the world a better place. Let me know if you agree, chat. But Loki, did you have a good time today? He's been plotting on me for 15 minutes. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the two eBooks, the four pillars of personality, and the four steps to style. I got the four values of vetting that I'm working on right now. It's going to be an absolute banger, buddy boy. Um, but go cop the two eBooks. They're in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.